Welcome back to another Doctor Who Big Finish audio drama review. Today I've got to take a look at one of the most recent box set releases. It is of course Torchwood One Machines, which just came out this month. This series of course stars Tracy Ann Oberman as Obon Hartman and Gareth David Lloyd as Yanto Jones, and it is basically a prequel series to Torchwood set between 2004 and 2006. It's around sort of before the final of series two, and it's a rather interesting bubble in the Torchwood universe. Of course, Big Finish have massively increased Increase the amount of Torchwood releases that we've had since they got the license a few years back. Of course, we have Big Finish Main Range that has sort of the monthly releases in the Torchwood series. Then we also have Aliens Among Us, which is the continuation of the Torchwood TV series. And then we have the occasional release here and there as well, which is the more special ones, such as, say, Believe or um, Outbreak. And I've never, in fact, reviewed those on this channel. I think that Torchwood 1 is kind of a series that I feel comfortable with reviewing because I don't really need much knowledge for it or much context into actual. Torchwood because I must admit it has been a very very long time since I've actually marathoned any of Torchwood. I think there's actually still stories that I still haven't seen I think definitely from series two and I don't really intend to go in and see them at any point in the future because I think that Torchwood is one of those ones that is kind of a little bit hit and miss with me but hey I think I quite enjoy this prequel series as I said because it's Torchwood earlier on. But well, first off, and as always, in the description below, I will leave the link to go and buy this release from the Big Finish website. It's currently out now at the physical pre-order price of £20, and the download is only £15, and it is in fact a slightly different box set to usual. This is the one from the previous series before the fall, and it is three episodes long, and yet yeah, it's a smaller box set, so it's a little bit cheaper than your other sets that are released. And yet yeah, it's a rather fun prequel series, actually, mainly based around Torchwood 1 in Canary Wharf with Avon Hartman from Series 2, and it gives a little bit more context to her character and the background of them which is rather nice. So in the description there will be the link to the Big Finish website to in fact check out the trailer for this release along with all the story details and the casting details which I do recommend checking out if you are interested by what is said throughout this review. So I can't exactly recall what happened last time when it came to reviewing Before the Fall because I know that a few releases from the Torchwood line were out by then but I don't know what attracted myself to Before the Fall. I think it may have been a box set that I just sort of listened to out of sheer accident to be honest I may have been a little bit bored and just decided to give it a go and then I ended up quite enjoying it and then I went on to this series and the major selling point is of course the return of Wotan from the first Doctor story The War Machines which is of course a 1960s episode of Doctor Who that I quite enjoy actually it's one of my favourite 1960s episodes so I was really interested to see how they were going to bring back Wotan or Wotan however you like to pronounce it it looks like Wotan but they pronounce it a lot different in the actual series and yeah I was intrigued to see how they were going to bring him back into 21st century Doctor Who and I think it's about time because he does have quite a lot of potential in sort of the new era of technology and to be honest I don't think this is going to be the end of Wotan I think we may see him return in the future maybe even in future as in the future timeline of Earth maybe having a little bit of a technological story where he is very much advanced as sort of opposed to his 1960s counterpart which is kind of not exactly the most advanced computer in the world. Taking a look at some of the casting details for this release, I am going to briefly go over the Torchwood team that we had in the previous box set because we do have a few of them returning in this one. So we do have Tracy Ann Oberman as a Von Hartman and she gets a lot of credit on Big Finish. I know that she was in Aliens Among Us so a lot more people were exposed to her character through that and she's also had quite a few of the main range stories. I believe one or two of those have been dedicated to her. I think that one of them is called One Rule or something like that. And yeah, I think that she is a character that is very much favoured in the Torchwood universe and within good reason Tracy Ann Oberman is absolutely brilliant I do really like her character she has a lot of sass and she does essentially carry this whole series she is the main protagonist and she carries the episodes really well I think that she's a really good character that you get used to but also at the same time I like the fact that you don't know much about her you don't know much about her background or her hobbies or anything out of Torchwood she's a very employment based woman and it's kind of nice to have this powerful female character in there and in this series we actually get a very interesting story that goes back within her timeline. Let's see how she employs Yanto which is a rather interesting one which we'll get onto that in a little bit. And in fact moving on to the other main character is of course Gareth David Lloyd as Yanto Jones and he's somebody that appeared very much very regularly in Torchwood itself in the actual TV series and does have a lot of appearances in the actual Torchwood audio dramas as well. It's really nice to in fact get a bit of exposure of his early life into Torchwood especially one of the episodes in this release that is in fact also written 
by Gareth David Lloyd, which is quite interesting. I do know that he written one for the Big Fish main range a few months ago called The Last Beacon, starring M. Bern Gorman as well. I didn't, in fact, listen to that one. So it was really interesting to see how Gareth was, in fact, going to write his own character. And I think that this might be a first for this channel to, in fact, see a story that is both written and starring by one of the main actors of the series. It is, in fact, quite an interesting concept. Now about a few of the other people in the cast as well, to give a few additional credits, we have Jane Asher as Elaine, Patterson Joseph as Matthew, James Wilby as Pascal, Adoa Daoa as Fiona, who is the person that plays uh, Martha's mother in series three, so she's a regular first in Doctor Who, however, she's not actually playing Martha's mum in this. Nikki Wardley as M. Stacey, who is in the later half of the series. Daniel Anthony, of course, and Clyde from Sarah Jane Adventures, who plays Julian. And then we also have Trevor Neal as Jason, Claire Wyatt as Tanya, Helen Goldwyn, who is a big Finnish producer as a receptionist, and Nicholas Pegg as the Law Machines and Wotan, or Wotan, however you like to pronounce it. And he is excellent throughout this series. I would like to give a bit of credit to him because he just sounds so chilling. They've not really changed Wotan's voice. I think that he is a very eerie, sort of whispery voice, and he is very cool in this, and I think that Big Finish have definitely done a very good job of recreating his character. And the final main credit that I'm going to give for the cast is... Tommy, who is played by Tim Benetic, and he is essentially another member of Torchwood. He is sort of Avon Hartman's, not exactly right-hand man, but he is basically this guy who was in Before the Fall, and he absolutely cracks me up. Honestly, he really knows what he's doing, and he does have a lot of laughs throughout this series, and I think the whole of this series is actually written really well, where you end up laughing out loud throughout. So yeah, a really enjoyable listen for that reason, and it is just, I think that every single character bounces off each other, and for that reason, I actually think that Avon Hartman uh, sort of Tracy Ann Oberman even and uh, Tim Benetech may in fact be my favourite two people of this series because they are just so great together and Tommy only appears in the first two episodes and I was actually missing him in the final episode of the series because I just can't get enough of Tommy. I think that he deserves his own spin-off. Honestly, Tim Benetick does a brilliant job with him. I know that he's done a lot of big finish in the past, but yeah, this is a character for me that just really hits a mark and I really enjoy him in it. Episodes and storylines for this series now. The first episode is The Law Machines, written by Matt Fitton. Episode two is Blind Summit, written by Gareth David Lloyd. And the final of the series is Nine to five written by Tim Foley and the whole series is directed by Barnaby Edwards and it is produced by James Coss, script edited by Scott Hancock, executive producers Jason Hick, Ellery and Nicholas Briggs and it is to be noted that Torchwood does of course contain plot material that may not be suitable for the younger listener, very much still continuing the trend of actual normal televised Torchwood and I do believe the majority of the big Finnish audio dramas with the Torchwood line as well so there is a little bit of language throughout this series, I think sort of mild language uh, here and there, also a little bit of violence violence as well, which is quite nice. It's a refreshing change from listening to the Doctor Who stuff that is very much more sort of toned back, of course. There is a few darker episodes of Doctor Who in there, of course, as I've reviewed previously in this channel, but I do think that they've definitely got that adult audience. It'll be interesting to see if they actually carry on that theme of class as well, because class was, of course, uh, aimed at a slightly older audience, uh, sort of around the later teens area, so it will be interesting to see if they, in fact, bring a little bit of language into that. So the first episode in this box set is the Law Machines written by Matt Fitton and I actually think it's the episode that is most similar to the 1960s Doctor Who story The War Machines and I think that it is a really interesting episode to in fact open on and it's probably one of my favourites of the series I must say I think that it is quite a rare thing to in fact have the opening episode being one of your favourites but it is essentially this guy called Julian coming into 21st century London and he is helping Votan actually gain presence throughout sort of the technology of 21st century or 20th century um, England and he wants to take over London and it is a really interesting story because you have this idea of this technology that was essentially built for the future in the 1960s however now we are in sort of 2004 or 2005 Votan is almost a little bit outdated and he thinks that he needs to gain contact to places such as NASA and NATO in order to gain a powerful presence however he doesn't realize that things such as the internet exists and Julian this character who's played by Daniel Anthony is in fact a really interesting guy because he is somebody that is trying to work with Votan and actually make sure that he gains his power that he so wishes and desires but at the same time he has the sort of 21st century knowledge that Votan doesn't have and does help him along the way so yeah it is quite interesting to see essentially an outdated robot 
try and be sort of technological and advanced in sort of a more up-to-date world. So yeah, that is quite an interesting story and sort of shows how 1960s Doctor Who would in fact play out in 21st century England today, which is quite fun. Introduced to the law machines throughout this story, which are essentially the war machines of the 21st century once again. However, they are basically robot policemen that are there to withstand order throughout the sort of the rough areas in London, and they are an interesting concept. I did expect to see them a little bit more throughout this box set, I must admit. They did only appear in this episode, and they are very much like the war machines. They do look rather clunky, but I do also love the way that they've been updated for the 21st century as well. You can see them on the cover and probably in the thumbnail as well for this review. And yeah, they are quite interesting. I love the way that they are voiced once again by Nicholas Pegg. And yeah, I think that this episode essentially is Tommy and Avon Hartman running around London trying to gain control essentially of this sort of alien extraterrestrial technology that they've tried to use to benefit humanity, but it's kind of backfired at the same time. And it also plays with humanity's sort of vulnerability as well to be actually sort of have discount codes and things and how they use the online media to kind of not really know what they are doing. So yeah, that is a rather interesting concept throughout this box set and it is a theme that almost runs all the way throughout. The next episode, Blind Summit, is written by Gareth David Lloyd and is in fact a rather interesting one, especially for you people that actually really like Torchwood and really like the pivotal moments in the series because this is essentially Gareth David Lloyd's first ever outing with Torchwood. We go back in time to before the Law Machines crisis in the first episode. We essentially see a Von Hartman recruit at Yanto Jones, even though he's not really very aware of it, and we have her wiping his mind every so often. And essentially, Von uses Yanto as a little bit of a counsellor. Every time that she tells him things because she's finding work incredibly lonely, uh, she then goes and wipes his mind by drugging him. So once again, an adult theme that is used throughout this box set. And Blind Summit also goes into Yantor's private life. We see how he is dealing with his father, who is um, arguably a bit mentally ill. He sort of doesn't really do much in his house. He kind of just sits there and drinks and yet isn't really very hygienic. And we also see how Yantor is suffering from being in this rather rundown area of London. We have this very dodgy sort of um, landlord that has given him basically this worst house that is essentially infested with rats at the same time. And we have him sort of living in a house of a rat called Steve pretty much. And um, we also see him him coping with his day-to-day -day life of working and needing payment in order to actually put to his rent and actually be able to stay with a roof over his head and it is really interesting to see this character that we've seen developed in Torchwood actually be very vulnerable at the very early half and this episode is mainly focused around this whole idea of this brain technology that they are using to sort of enhance intelligence and we have this company uh, that are using this technology that they've stolen from Torchwood and yeah it basically all links to to the overall plot arc of the series and it is a little bit of an unusual timey-wimey one that I think does need a little bit of a re-listen after you've listened to it for the first time to fully understand it but at the same time it's a really nice character piece and I think that if it was written by anybody else other than Gareth David Lloyd it may have been a quite different episode but I think the fact that this episode is mainly focused around Yanto and it is written by the actual guy that plays Yanto it means that there is a lot of understanding in the character and also he can have a little bit of input into the background that Yanto Yantos came from, which is a really interesting idea. James Pascal, who plays your stereotypical male villain from this box set, is also very nice. He appears in this story. And the whole idea of this episode of actually using the technology to sort of dump bodies essentially in a river, experiment on them, kill them, and then dump them. And we think that these people have essentially killed themselves, but of course not. They've been dumped there by kind of this private business that are doing their own experiments. I think nice to see his character have a little bit more padding because I do think that this episode is mainly focused around Yanto and which I think that is great however at the same time it still would have been nice to go into the idea of Blind Summit and kind of the company and corporation behind that and kind of why they are doing what they are doing and uh, what it kind of benefits them and sort of what they want to achieve in the future it would have been maybe nice to delve into that or even considering this whole box set is theoretically linked it may have been nice to see a few of the elements in this episode brought across to the series finale which it is to some extent but it would have maybe been nice to see it a little bit more but as I say I think that this is quite a pivotal point in Yanto's life and it's an interesting step back for this box set almost a pause on the current plot line that we've got going on even to the extent where you think or at least 
I did at the very end of this episode, how is this one linked to the previous episode in the box set? And then by the very end of the series, 9 to 5 kind of caps everything off and then you realise how it's all linked, which is a really nice conclusion. I'm moving on to the series finale, which is written by Tim Foley and it is 9 to 5, which is, it kind of reminds me of The Runaway Bride, where you have this workplace that is in fact employing these people who aren't even real, which is quite an interesting sort of science fiction idea. I had a little bit of a Black Mirror kind of vibe from this story. Basically, these people are made to work nine until five in this place. They think they are real. They have their own family. They have their own memories and they have sort of their own problems as well. But in fact, they've been created by this sort of computer and this technology to just work on this government system and essentially be temps and type up this information and basically all for the government and it turns out that there is an evil ploy behind it and I think that this story is one of those ones where if you realise this whole box set is linked you can quite obviously tell that Wotan is going to crop up at some point and at the very end of this episode I think it's no surprise in saying Wotan does come back up and we do get to reveal the full extent of his plan and he has developed a little bit more since the first story. He kind of has a bit more understanding in 21st century technology, which is quite good. But at the same time, I kind of like the fact that he has a lot of absence throughout this box set. Considering he was the main villain in the first story, and that, as I said, we have this pause button for the middle episode, and then we return to him in the series finale, actually it develops a little bit more impact. And when he finally comes back in sort of the final act of this episode, and his whispering voice almost comes over the tannoy, it does feel very powerful and very daunting. I think that Yvonne Hartman almost feels like she is almost outpowered by the very end of this story as well. And as I say, I love this idea of basically these people who think they are real and they're doing this stuff in order to basically satisfy this company. I think that it is a rather toothpaste yet sad plot at the same time because it is rather real to workplace life, I guess, in real life today, but it kind of takes it to the next level, which I think Tim Foley did a very good job at that. There is a character in this episode called Stacy, who's played by Nikki Wardley, who is the person who plays alongside Catherine Tate in a few of the things that she's been in. You'll know her uh, from a lot of stuff if you've seen her first, just Google her. Uh, she's a very good character, actually. You get used to her and she has a lot of development throughout the story and you almost gain the perspective of this sort of genetically fake temporary human who has these memories and she realizes that she's not real and you almost gain sympathy for her and she kind of tries to defy the system which is rather intriguing but at the very end this episode doesn't have the happy ending it's kind of left not necessarily on a cliffhanger but it's left a little bit unresolved not everything's happy and that's what I kind of like about this box set because it leaves things to be a little bit grim although that said it would have been nice to maybe have the law machines return or maybe the war machines even maybe have them return in full and kind of take over but I think that could be left for maybe another return of Wotan in another release maybe even in the Doctor Who line or something where we have Wotan or Wotan fully taking over London and maybe the rest of the UK via actual sort of modern day technology maybe he's done a little bit of research into like iPhones or something like that because I feel like sort of the idea of the human obsession with technology and development such as what we get in iPhones and smartphones and different laptops and things today that is something that uh, is very fitting for Wotan I think and even stuff like Alexa's and those like automatic Amazon speakers you could do quite a lot of that but with Vortan at the same time and kind of what if Vortan controlled the Alexa speakers that you can buy online. There we go. I'll write that story if you want big finish. I'm going to return at some point. But for now, I think that this is a really interesting box set. It's rather cinematic. And I love how confined this episode is. You don't really need much context into the other Torchwood series. It's a really nice jumping on point. And also you can tell that the whole team behind it, the script editing from Scott Hancock, the directing from Barnaby Edwards, and also all the people that have wrote for this series as well, Matt Fitton, Gareth David Lloyd, and Tim Foley, have all got the characters really nicely down to a T and I think that the actual sort of relationship between the different characters is really nice for this series as well. It is a very good character piece and yeah for that reason if you are a fan of Big Finish on Torchwood uh, then I recommend this series but also at the same time if you are looking for a jumping on point for Torchwood then I also recommend this series because this is definitely one of those along with Before the Fall as well. 
really it for this box set. I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have any questions about this release, then please do leave them in the description below and I will reply to them at some point in the near future. Um, and I can't really answer any questions on the rest of the Torchwood line because, as I say, this is virtually the only series that I review on this channel. I would love to be able to listen to the other ones, however. To be honest, I think that I already review quite a lot of Big Finish on this channel and I think my head might explode if I listen to any more at the minute, along with all of the other content that I pump out quite regularly on this channel. So yeah, um, I guess if you have any questions about Torchwood that isn't relating to the series, do leave them below. And maybe if you are a Big Finish Torchwood fan, help each other out because then you can jump onto different stories maybe even recommend a few Torchwood episodes in the description and then other people can check them out as well that'd be rather helpful for others so yeah that's it for this review hope you've enjoyed it and i'll just see you all in another doctor who big finish audio drama review in the future as well so thanks for watching and i shall see you all next time bye for now